Hi, I'm Hannah Gabby and I'm here to tell you the binary is bullshit. Sex typically refers to your biological traits. There's your gonads, your genitalia, your internal sex characteristics, your hormone production, hormone response, and secondary sex characteristics. Gender is about your identity, your expression, and it's often based on ideas about sex. Eh, wrong. <laughs> Thanks for playing, big guy. John Doyle in. Heck off, Kami. Alrighty, so today we've got five common misconceptions about sex and gender, and I really like the way that they title it. Like, oh, don't worry, it's a common misconception. Don't worry, we're all learning here. Like, as if we're the ones who are out of touch with reality. Okay, so let's uh, let's pick off here where we where we left off. It was published by Teen Vogue, which, in case you aren't familiar, is a publication that's related to Vogue, but is specifically targeted at teenage girls. So bear that in mind next time you hear. Oh no, we're not we're not targeting young people with our agenda. No. And then you've got this publication that's literally established to target teenage girls, and they come out with five common misconceptions about sex and gender. This idea that the body is either male or female is totally wrong. And I am living proof of that. We know intersex people exist and break down this binary. I had a feeling that this was the approach that they were gonna take. So basically they're saying that because intersex people exist, biological sex is completely invalid. Intersex, by the way, is the politically correct way of saying hermaphrodite now, uh, because apparently medical literature is now offensive. But so they're trying to use the exception to invalidate the rule. They're saying, hey, about 2% of the population is intersex, therefore biological sex cannot exist. That's logically incoherent. And there's actually, there's a Roman phrase Phrase, which I won't even attempt to pronounce correctly. It's like uh, exceptio probat regulum in casibus non acceptus. And that translates roughly to the exception confirms the rule in case is not accepted. So in this case, the exception actually proves the rule because since what they're saying is that because people can be born with different chromosomes, genitalia, or internal reproductive organs that aren't considered to be traditionally or traditionally male or female, therefore those traditional beliefs are just socially constructed, but those are all abnormal exceptions caused by abnormalities during the pregnancy. And if they hadn't happened, this exception wouldn't exist. It would just be the rule. So if that was the case, we would see a much larger proportion of the population being intersex, much larger than 1.7%. And if this were the case, there wouldn't be an almost 99% correlation between being biologically male or female and then having those traits. So and that's the reason we categorize men and women that way. We, and we've done that way forever. Uh, I mean, intersex dogs exist too. Right now, what? It rained what? 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 It's very rare and it's caused by abnormalities that take place during the pregnancy. Abnormalities like uh, congenital adrenal hyperplasia, ovarian tumors, uh, different insensitivity syndromes, and there's even evidence that suggests that exposure to pesticides during pregnancy can cause this. So the point is, had these abnormalities during the pregnancy not occurred, the child would have been born a male or a female, as expected. Just because something can occur naturally does not mean that it's normal or even good or preferable, and to think otherwise is illogical. It's the appeal to nature fallacy. So about 3% of babies born every year in the United States have some sort of birth defect. And we don't conclude from that, well, since some babies are born this way, well, that must mean there's no normal way for a baby to be born. So we should just stop categorizing things. That's absurd. We all have characteristics that are typically male and typically female. And it is really about political choices, social factors, ideological choices that we assign meaning to different parts of our body. So the meaning may be that the thing that most of us are taught, that if you have a vagina, you're a girl, or if you have a penis, you're a boy. Yeah, we're taught, we're taught a lot of things as kids, usually because we don't know anything. And uh, what, what he or she's trying to can't really tell to be honest, but what, what they're trying to do is they're trying to say, well, because we're taught to believe something is children, that doesn't mean it's true. Therefore, you get to decide your gender. And there's a lot of things that we were told as kids that turned out to be false, uh, but your gender is not one of them. Your parents might have told you that Santa is real, but if you go to a different kid's house, their parents might not participate in that. You could take your kid, or you could take your kid out, ask any person on the street, hey, what gender are they? 99.9999% of the time, you'll get a right answer. Uh, but gender's different from sex, they'll say. No, it's not. They're trying to say that we were taught to behave as either girls or boys, and that's not true. I mean, there's so much research that proves that there are differences in the male and female brains that directly influence behavior and interests, but that's inconvenient for this narrative. So they just claim that everything is just socially constructed, uh, which is then of course interesting because 
These studies are conducted on dozens of cultures throughout the world, and it really makes you wonder how much the Western male patriarchy is affecting the interests of young men and women living in the tribal areas of the world. But like many simple binaries break down when you start to really get into the nitty gritty. Over history, the location or the idea of what determined one's true sex shifted. A hundred years ago, it used to be whether or not you had ovaries or testes. Then it shifted to what kinds of chromosomes that you had. But the body doesn't just have one place where we can sit there with a microscope or something else and say, hey, wait a second, this is really who you are, this is your true sex. In fact, who you are is who you say you are. In fact, no, who you are is not who you say you are. If you believe that, then you don't believe in objectivity. You can change your name, you can change your hair color, I likely won't be able to tell the difference, but when you decide that you're going to change your gender and then my natural ability to detect what your gender is just by looking at you tells me that you're incorrect, we have a problem there, me telling you that you're incorrect about your gender is not me telling you what gender you have to be. Your gender was decided at birth, presumably by God or at the very least nature, and it exists objectively of your desires or of my desires, and me reminding you of that truth is just resistance to your willingness to engage in delusion. Also, what she mentioned there about um, different traits being used to define men and women throughout history, those are all still very, very, very highly correlated with either being male or female. So saying, oh, it used to be ovaries, and then it was chromosomes, right? But the people that had ovaries overwhelmingly had the same chromosomes too. So it wasn't random and disorganized. The metric just changed. Intersex people are individuals born with varying degrees of sex characteristics that don't fit the typical script of what it means to be male or female. I identify as an intersex person. I identify as an intersex woman. And we're not that rare. It's 1.7% of the population is born like this. How can you say that with a straight face? We're not that rare. We're 1.7% of the population. It's pretty rare, if you ask me. And also, uh, if the dichotomy of male and female doesn't exist, why identify as an intersex woman? Doesn't that just reinforce that you deviate from the normal circumstance? It's as common as people with green eyes and red heads. Everybody knows somebody, but it's sometimes hard for the person to speak about it or the person doesn't necessarily know it. I remember when I first learned about intersex and how surprising it was to me. I was like, what is this? Why have I never heard about this? If this was as big of a deal as they're making it out to be, if this was like really normal, if this was really proof that gender and biological sex don't exist, we wouldn't need Teen Vogue to tell us about it. We would just already know. We would have figured it out at birth. It would be instinctual. We wouldn't need propaganda that's engineered to target and as a result, confuse young kids. One thing a lot of people in the intersex community talk about are medically unnecessary surgeries that are forced upon intersex children to make them fit into these boxes uh, of male or female. I have gone through surgeries that have really stuck with me through my whole life and affected a lot of different parts of my life just so that I can fit into this box of female. So with the surgeries, I guess the question would be consent. If they're happening at a young age, the child can't necessarily consent to having the surgery done. It would be completely at the parent's discretion. Um, and so the intention of the surgeries is usually to reduce the likelihood of future problems, but unfortunately they often end up creating more problems with function, sensation, and even health. So. It's possible to be both intersex and transgender, but it's really important to understand that they are not the same. And the motive is revealed, boys and girls. The reason this is being brought up in the same conversation, transgenders and intersex people, is because they're trying to completely eliminate the idea of gender. They're shifting the goalposts because now, not only are they attacking the idea of gender, they're attacking the idea of biological sex in general by highlighting cases of intersex individuals. And let me be clear, because I've been called transphobic before, uh, but I don't hold any personal prejudice against transgender people. I was a member of the Gender Sexuality Alliance in high school, believe it or not, because I wanted to understand what was going on within that community, uh, what their views were, etc. So I wasn't really friends with with, I wasn't friends with everybody in it, but the people that I did talk to understood my position on this is basically that I don't care what you personally identify as. Uh, if you and I are talking, you're more comfortable with me referring to you in a certain way. I will do that out of respect for you. But my problem is that when there are externalities introduced, when your identity is now a militant cultural narrative that is targeting and confusing children, that's where I draw the line. That is where we as a society have to step in and say, no, this is not normal. This is very abnormal. And that doesn't necessarily mean that it's bad. But to try and normalize this is doing a net disservice to society by almost every metric. It's more like a Venn diagram. While intersex people are often born with a mix of what science considers male and female biological characteristics, trans people are often born into a binary gender and then 
realize later in life that whatever their assigned gender was isn't how they actually want to live, isn't who they actually are. Yes, it is how you actually are. You don't get to just decide your sex. We've gone over this. It's so boring. And then one day they realize that's not how this works. Uh, because for you to just be able to decide, you know what? I'm a girl. That would require there to be a bunch of normal girls from whom you can derive your identity as a girl. If there was no biological tendency for girls to act like girls and boys to act like boys, then you wouldn't be able to identify as either since they'd effectively be the same. So because of that, the very idea of gender identity is predicated on the fact that boys and girls have these innate biological tendencies. I was born with XY chromosomes and my gender at birth was female. We tend to think that chromosomes for women should only ever be XX, but there are women that have XY chromosomes. Chromosomes are not the sole determinant of your sex or your gender. When I say I'm a woman, I don't just mean that I identify as a woman. I mean that my biology is the biology of a woman, regardless of whether or not doctors agree. I feel as if red flags should be raised at the sound of regardless of whether or not doctors agree. Saying that a person with XY chromosomes is only male is a narrow way to look at the diverse range of chromosome differences that we can have as a person. Again, there's nothing really new here. I mean, they're still trying to emphasize the hyper minority of people that are born intersex to invalidate the idea of gender and even of biological sex now. I mean, as we stated earlier, they're shifting the goalposts. Now, they're not even gonna try and argue that gender is mental and sex is physical like they have been for the last 18 months, two years, however long. They're opening the door for the conversation to be completely shifted to both sex and gender are different and also socially constructed because 1.7% of the population breaks the norm. And even though the chromosomes and genitalia and secondary sex characteristics all correlate nicely with one gender 98.3% of the time, the fact that sometimes they don't as a result of abnormalities during the pregnancy, which I'll ignore for my narrative, means that now we just have to throw out all of this. Everything just gone, embrace androgyny because Teen Vogue said so. That's the staple of our culture. That's the pillar on which our society must rest if it's to prosper, Freaking Teen Vogue. Human beings are so complex that each person has the right to define who they are, and X and Y can't define who you are in your heart, in your mind, as you're growing in life. Too many people still believe that there's such a thing as a true sex and that it comes from your chromosomes. It's not the case. Science has known this for decades, and it's actually a consensus in science and uncontroversial. She's framing it as, oh, well, this isn't even controversial. Hee <laughs> hee, there's scientific consensus. And you wouldn't disagree with science. They've known this for decades. And if you don't, you're a dumbass. And then the Teen Vogue audience, all seven of them, they're like, oh, man, I can't disagree with a scientist. That'd be a betrayal to Bill Nye, my seventh grade environmental science hero. And she's being sneaky with it because she's saying that your chromosomes are not going to match your gender 100% of the time. So she's basically just affirming the existence of intersex people, but she's ignoring the overwhelming tendency of them to match to fit her narrative. Like the tendency is so overwhelming that in fact, and I'm repeating myself, but it's important. The only time they don't match is when there was an abnormality in the pregnancy. Abnormalities do not disprove the validity of normalities. Everybody has testosterone. It's just a matter of how your body responds to it. But it's also not just related to things that we think of as masculine. We actually need it for our liver, for our brain, for our heart. So it's really a misnomer to keep calling it the male sex hormone. Everybody has it, everybody needs it. It's not just about sex. Okay, yeah, but men produce a substantially greater amount of testosterone than women do. I mean, they're actually disputing this. Um, and that's why we have a higher sex drive, but they don't like that because it goes against the idea that females can be empowered by the hookup culture, but that is a different discussion. Um, so men produce testosterone to develop sex organs, produce sperm, grow facial and body hair, deepen the voice. And the ironic thing is that when women decide that they identify as men, guess what they do? They take testosterone. If testosterone wasn't primarily associated with masculinity, then women who think they're men wouldn't be taking it to grow facial hair and lower the pitch of their voice. Since it doesn't matter anyways, they have enough testosterone anyways uh, to help their liver or whatever. In the sporting world today, some female athletes are even tested for high testosterone levels and forbidden from competition just based on their naturally occurring biology. Okay, so this person seems to be acknowledging that higher levels of testosterone increase ability to perform athletically. And I really wonder how they feel about men that identify as women competing against actual women in sports because we've seen what happens there. 
uh, on countless occasions. There are women in elite sport that have 46 XY chromosomes, but their bodies don't respond to the testosterone that they produce. No testosterone, their tissues can't use it, and yet they're excelling at elite athletes. So testosterone's not necessary to even be an elite athlete. And it's definitely not the only thing that makes people a good athlete. 46 XY chromosomes, and she described this person as a woman, plus it was anecdotal. I guess I would just say that if testosterone isn't important in making people more athletic, why are steroids banned in professional sports? Why are men that think they're women beating women in competitions? Also, if testosterone isn't just masculine like you claim, why are you even bringing it up that it isn't necessary to be athletic? It seems like you're acknowledging that men are more athletic and also have higher testosterone, and you're trying to make the case that men aren't more athletic, and even if they were, it isn't because of their testosterone. Definitely a cringeworthy misconception. It's like so steeped in what we've been taught culturally and as a society. Trans women are not biological men. We should never talk about any woman who is trans as a man. Not a biological man, not a NATO man, not really a man. This is what I mean. They're changing the entire dialogue. How do we know that trans women aren't biological women? Because you're calling them trans women. If they were women, they'd be women. What separates them is your BS gender spectrum theory. Like Buddy literally just said, we should never refer to trans women as men. And it's like, what does the trans and trans woman mean then? This is used to target trans women and make us out as predators, especially when it comes to bathroom bills. The reality is that a trans woman's biology is a female biology. It's the system that's causing friction to divide us as women and friction to divide feminists to feel like there has to be some separation or that my trans womanhood and your cisgender womanhood makes us in competition or one of us is trying to take up more space when the conversation should be we're all women. It's just my journey is a different journey. That's intended to try and unite this delusion with modern feminism, which is its own delusion too. And it seems to be working so far. Much of the violence that we see against the trans community, particularly trans women and femmes of color, is fueled by this idea that trans women are really men, and that when someone learns that a person has a body part that they typically associate with men, or that a person was assigned male at birth but is a woman, and it's important that we really expose these efforts for what they are and fight back, and part of the way we can fight back is to show that these concepts aren't the fixed scientific constructions that people want to suggest. So what they said there about violence against trans people uh, being a result of someone finding out that someone has a body part that they weren't expecting, that doesn't mean that you meet someone, you shake their hand, and they're like, hey, by the way, I'm trans, and you're like, oh, let me just put on my best pair of curb stomping boots. No. So here's the reality. The largest reported survey of transgender people in the United States, uh, to my knowledge, it was the transgender, the National Transgender Discrimination Survey from 2008 to 2009, and it found that roughly 11% of all transgender people reported participating in sex work. And respondents who had done sex work had higher rates of smoking, alcohol and drug use, and even suicide attempts when compared to trans people that did not participate in sex work. And then according to the Trans Murder Monitoring Project, 62% of the over 2,600 trans people killed between 2008 and 2017 were sex workers. People in the world of prostitution tend to be pretty bad hombres. And unfortunately, what happens to these people is they get murdered because the person that purchased their services thought that they were getting something else. And it really is awful. And I've been to a few trans rallies and they bring this up every time. And I've never heard the media cover it. Uh, but it's an epidemic within that community, and it really is awful. But I'll tell you what, the way to solve it isn't to normalize sex work and it isn't to eradicate gender. So if you want to help these people, you should reconsider. But anyways, um, I got to go watch Don Lemon or something now to boost my IQ because I think that we can all agree after watching that Teen Vogue video, we're all a bit dumber, so. Hey guys, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up and leave it a comment right away. You can also subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already and share this with your friends. These are just ideas. These are not mandates. Uh, obviously, you control your own destiny. I'm just, I'm just spitballing here, you know? But uh, thank you so much for watching and may God bless America.